Okay, ma'am, we're gonna hold up till you do your public comment and then you can speak on that. Um, but right now, we're gonna close. Are we closing 2802 public comments and then going into? Uh, well, you have to vote on it, so. Yeah, I know I, that, but <clears throat> I'm just saying. We're closing the public, the I, public hearing for 2802, ordinance 2802. I think um, I know, it's, it's everybody's first, a lot of people's first times here. Um, if you would like to speak on this subject, I think you can still have the opportunity if anybody wants to talk. Um, if, if you want to do that now, if you want to do that after the next one, but understanding the procedures, what will happen is, is when public comments, when the public hearing is closed, they would then vote on that ordinance as written right now to move it forward to second reading, knowing that there is intent to make changes to that. So there is a procedure and process that is happening right now. Um, we just want to make sure people understand what is going on. So if you want to say something now, Madam President, I, I think that's what you would do now. Um, or if you want to wait until... So we're just going to leave 2802 open for right now. Open and let you speak. Wow. And you have four minutes. Thank Give you. Give your name and, your, and where you live. My name is Paula Donalds. I live in the city of Salisbury. I'm on a fixed income. I'm disabled. I don't have the money to shovel out. Sorry, Mr. Heath, uh, Mayor Heath, but everyone in city council, you need to stop blaming each county council and city council. Come together, work together. No one, and I echo what the last two gentlemen just said. I'm in agreement with them all the way. In fact, probably everyone in this room. I don't know what happened to all the money that we had and it went to other places, but here we are in 2023 and I could barely keep up with my water bill to put food on my table. So please, no, no more, no more taxes. Work together. Come to another cut someplace else. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Kay Gibson. I'm a citizen of Salisbury. It's hard to have an intelligent discussion when we came to the meeting without full information. I want to say that there's going to have to be more revenue, but there's also going to have to be major cuts. And they may be <coughs> uncomfortable, but I don't care because I've had to cut things that I've wanted or, ne or thought I needed in order to make ends meet. A balanced budget is revenue equals expenses, okay? You can't keep upping the taxes. Number one, who wants to buy in Salisbury right now anyway because of the double taxation? Now you're going to make it worse? And we won't even talk about fixed income. I live on Social Security. The money isn't there. What do I do? What do I cut? Do I not take my uh, high blood pressure medication because it costs $50 copay every two months? What do we cut? You can say you're in bad shape but you're not in nearly as bad shape as the people you're coming with your hand out to. And I agree with the realtor that says we raise it slowly. It means that major cuts this year, major things maybe don't get done. A little bit this year, a little bit next year, let's do it over three years. People in this city are not, most of us are not rich. Most of us, are living, a lot of us are living on fixed incomes. A lot of people are living below poverty level. What do you think you are doing? You can't shock us with a major increase. You can, you can give a little more every year. I agree. But don't do it this way. You're going to hurt a lot of people. And a lot of people are going to be very, very angry. Thank you. Well. 
My name is Melody Mitchell, and I own a business here in Salisbury. We were just annexed in approximately two years ago. And as everyone knows, we're just now getting over COVID. I run a, a daycare center. Let me tell you, that was not fun during COVID-19, and we haven't even caught up with that. And now you want to turn around and tax my business to tune between all of this, like 27%. Where's that gonna come from? Error income hasn't increased. As a matter of fact, he's, the mayor's correct. All of my expenditures have gone up. And now I'm gonna be hit with something that is thousands of dollars. It's not just a couple dollars. It really does need to be reconsidered. And I agree with the other people that have spoke. If you do it in increments, nobody's going to suffer terribly from it, but we just can't take that kind of hit all at one time. And I think some things should be tabled. Go to the county council yourselves and the, and the two groups work this out among themselves. If they owe us that money, then get it from them. It shouldn't come from air pockets when they should be the ones paying it if you're servicing their area because we're double taxed too. We get, we pay county and city taxes. Thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. I don't think he Sorry. was sworn in. Were you sworn? Oh. Yes, he was. Yes, I stood up. Yes, he was. We were you sworn? Uh-huh. He with was. The ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he was. There were two gentlemen. I thought you were standing. No, he was yeah, back with the up. ladies. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a prepared, um, anything I just wanted to say um, I was writing down something and I'm not sure if I'm, I might be mistaken but in the horizon program I, is it um the Ross building would they be paying property taxes like I think for the first five years they don't pay any I just want to make sure I, I'm not saying that's way off no uh, they are part of uh, an incentive program that is part of the Horizon program downtown that has an, uh, they would, um, when they open up, they are available to a tax abatement. Oh, process. so they're not available? Like they would qualify for the program. They've applied for the program. As long as everything continues forward, they should receive an abatement. Okay, yeah, that's what I was, I was, I thought that was the case. I was just a little bit concerned that we were, it seems as though in the past we had a, a desire for more development, increased development, more people to come to the city. And I, I felt like this myself, my name is Luke Angelot, Luke Angelot, I live outside the city limits, but um, but anyways, it seems as though in the past we had like a desire to like increase development, but we weren't really prioritizing the retainment of the people who already live here, and I feel like right now we're kind of eating that, um, because for example, the Ross building, which I know their property tax bill would be high, isn't paying it, won't pay anything for a, a good moment, but now we have to increase normal people's property taxes by 10%, I feel like that's a little, kind of, uh, yeah, unfair, kind of prioritizing people that have more to, to spend than the average person. That's all I wanted to say. I feel like we were, our priorities might have been a little bit backwards back, and now we're feeling it now. But yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, sweet. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Mary Lou Culbertson and I live in Salisbury. And I agree, the county and the city just get to get, get in a room, get it together. Don't separate because you don't get anywhere that way. Got to be together. And I am going to go to the county because the county taxes are going up too. I guess you all read that today too. I mean, you know, it's not just city, it's the county. But I don't feel like we should pay for that county if we pay for the city. And believe me, I will be at that meeting. I think it's May, May 18th. Is that when it's going to be? I don't know. I have to look. How do you find this stuff out? Anyway? On, the, on, the, uh, on their website. website. On their website. We're downstairs. Okay. It's posted. Anyway, yeah. I will find that out. But I believe all these people. I'm on a fixed income. Actually, I peddle my wares on, on uh, Saturdays at, at flea markets just to make ends meet. And I don't think I should have to do that at 77 years old. I should be able to enjoy my life. But... 
I don't because I have to pay all these taxes, but I will pay them for the privilege of living in Salisbury because it's a nice place to live and we're fortunate. But as far as this fire department goes, we got to figure something out on that one because that's not fair to anybody. Uh, why should we even do anything with the county roads? I mean, again, that is just dumb. They have money. I pay money to them every year, so they have money. But anyway, thank you, everybody, for listening. And I'm glad everybody puts their opinion up here because that's what makes things work. Everybody work together. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. You have to come to the podium. Have you been sworn in? He's not. No. <clears throat> we swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. My question is, is the Salisbury housing... I need your name and where you live, sir. Sorry. My name is Joe Schiller. I live uh, uh, in Salisbury on Trooper's Way. Is, is the Salisbury housing expansion incentive program still alive? I've heard a lot of other things, but is that still alive? Um, the program, if you're referring to the Horizon program, uh, yes, it is still active. Okay. Well, we've heard about a 10% increase, which is, is just too much. And there's an underlying reason that I feel that, that these type of pressures are existing. First, I'd like to say that uh, I uh, served in my past as, a, as the uh, director of finance for the county for 27 years. So I do have a good general understanding of how local government operates and also what the elected officials have to deal with. But uh, one of the main reasons that I feel that we've got a real problem with these tax increases, it's a basic reason and it's lurking just under the surface. And that is the fact that the city of Salisbury is venturing outside of a city government's historic role of providing traditional basic services by approving new tax credits for builders. That new program is the Salisbury Housing Expansion Incentive Program, and it encourages population growth by covering 7,684 new housing units. Unfortunately, it also forfeits tens of millions of dollars in fee revenue in coming years and puts increasing pressure on the city's operating budget to provide the higher level of basic services required for the anticipated faster growing population with all those new units coming in. The proposed new fire, <coughs> oh, oh, um, the total fees waived is estimated in coming years for those 7,684 units at $40,779,000. That's forfeited fees that the re those revenues are, would not be coming into the city. Uh, the pressure that was put on this fire and life safety fee is a first example of the type of pressures that are going to be coming with these type of uh, ser services like, like the uh, tax credit for builders. <coughs> the city needs to be careful on that. The proposed new fire and no, not, we've determined that's, uh, that's not alive right now. During current high inflation, many taxpayers simply cannot afford the sizable proposed new fee. Well, they can't afford the proposed new 10% increase. This is especially true regarding our senior <coughs> citizen population, many of whom are living on fixed incomes. I therefore urge you, the, county count, the city council, to consider working your way back to providing just basic services to the city population that is growing under normal housing market conditions. No need to get into all these special uh, wave, wave programs that cost millions and millions of dollars and pump a, a population to the point where it's gonna put added 
pressure on the operating budget when, and when there's an added pressure on the operating budget, what does that mean? Taxes go up. I thank you for the opportunity to express my concerns regarding this important matter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, just one clarification point. Um, he was re referencing the Here is Home program. Um, there are two incentive programs. Horizon, which is for downtown redevelopment of housing and hotels. Here is Home is community-wide for residential development. Um, for those who don't know, there is a shorter uh, a crisis in housing in Salisbury, and to not incentivize development of housing in Salisbury is uh, is not a good decision. So we have chosen to do that to incentivize housing. And that was something we talked about when that program became live. Okay. Uh, what any questions or comments from the council? Mm -hmm. Anything? No, I just appreciate everyone coming to, to share their. Okay. Concerns. I'd like to call a motion. All in favor? Um, we need to close the public. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, the public hearing is now closed. And this is just to move to second reading, correct? I just want to make and clarify mm -hmm. here. Okay. Okay. I'd like to call the motion. All those in favor of? It, 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 bro, I'm sorry. I just, I apologize. I know you were, you're on a roll too. <laughs> I just, I feel like. I want to once emphasize that I sympathize and empathize with a lot of the public comments coming here. I know myself and many of my family members are on fixed incomes and you know, hearing that echoing sentiment across the board, I just, um, I want to reiterate that, that I've, I've, I mentioned it last meeting, but I, I do have extremely strong concerns with the number of rates and increases that we're seeing here at the city level. And it's a, it's a double-edged sword. We're, we're seeing costs at the city, services we have to cover, but I just, I feel like there has to be a better solution than putting it back on the burden of our residents here. And, and that could just could just be me, but I just wanted to echo that before we moved any further with this. I'd like to call the motion, all in favor of ordinance 2802, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, the vote is four to zero, and the vice president voted aye. Um, I would like to entertain a motion and a second to approve ordinance 2803. So moved. Second. I was trying to give Michelle some time. I'm so sorry. I even paused. Sorry, I have to. I, I have to <laughs> manually unmute every time. It's <laughs> go for it. It's all you. Mr. Shea. Sure. Ordinance number 2803, an ordinance of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, to amend water and sewer rates to increase rates by 12 percent and making said changes effective for all bills dated October 1, 2023, and thereafter, unless and until subsequently revised or changed. Whereas the water and sewer rates must be revised in accordance with the proposed fiscal year 2024 budget of the City of Salisbury and the appropriations thereby made and established for purposes of the water and sewer departments. The rates um, as proposed in ordinance number 2803 are set forth in section one, which was made a part of the agenda. Finish? Okay. 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 Um, if anyone is willing to speak to the public hearing, you need to stand and be sworn in. We still have to do it. Okay, we still have to do it. Um, the public hearing is now open. <coughs> The public hearing is now closed. Call the motion. All those in favor of resolution, I mean, of ordinance 2803, please signify by saying aye. Just emphasizing, just second reading again. I just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Aye. 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 Four to zero, President, Vice President votes aye. <clears throat> 
I would like to have a motion and a second for ordinance 2804. So moved. Second. <coughs> Ashley. Ordinance number 2804, an ordinance to the City of Salisbury, Maryland to set fees for FY 2024 and thereafter and less than until subsequently revised or changed, whereas the fees charged by the City are reviewed and then revised in accordance with the adoption of the fiscal year 2024 budget of the City of Salisbury, and whereas the fee amount set forth in the FY 2024 fee schedule attached hereto and incorporated herein as Exhibit 1, identify and list all fee amounts to be charged and otherwise assessed by the City of Salisbury for the period of the fiscal year 2024 in accordance with the adoption of the fiscal year 2024 budget of the City of Salisbury. And whereas some fee amounts to be charged and otherwise assessed by the City of Salisbury in fiscal year 2023 may have been inadvertently omitted from the FY 2023 fee schedule attached here to and incorporated herein as Exhibit 1, and any fee amount not listed in said FY 2023 fee schedule shall be and remain the fee amount as set forth in the City of Salisbury Municipal Code. Now therefore, be it ordained and, enact and enacted by the Council of the City of Salisbury as follows, Section 1, the fee amount set forth in FY 2024 fee schedule attached here to as Exhibit 1 and incorporated herein as if fully set forth in this section one are hereby adopted by the Council of the City of Salisbury. And furthermore, the fee amount set forth in FY 24 fee schedule shall supersede the corresponding fee amount set forth in the City of Salisbury Municipal Code until one or more of such fee amounts are subsequently amended and exhibit one for which includes the FY 2024 fee schedule was attached as part of the agenda. Is, is there anyone here willing to speak for the public hearing? You need to be sworn in. Hi. Brian City Clerk, Kim Nichols. Hello. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. I will now open the public hearing. Either one. This is Jake Chandler. Um, one of the uh, operators at GNI Properties, Salisbury, Maryland, and I just wanted to uh, to clarify something, I guess, for myself, because this has all been a little bit confusing to me. I'm sure it has for everybody else here too, because it seems like it seems like that's good. It seems like we all came here for one thing, and we're hearing something else. So I came here. <coughs> <clears throat> about the fire fee um, and it sounds like it's turned into a tax increase of 10% for residential and commercial property and um, my question for for you guys is uh, we've been over 2802 2803 and 2804 which of those actually represents the 10% property tax increase is that 2802 or 2804 So 2804 would not, that is the, for the fee schedule. Um, that would be where you would see um, the fire and life safety fee along with all the other fees that could be proposed on a fee schedule. Um, 2802 establishes um, the different rates, but then I think um, constant yield is where we actually go over um, the rates that would uh, that exist. That's what was publicized. So. Um, I think we're one one up. It's, it's the next one on the list. Is so right now we're on twenty eight oh four. Correct. And Just, you're saying that yes. the the property tax increases that are proposed are in the next one, not this one. They would be what is um, proposed when we release the constant yield tax rate. Um, and if there's modified from what was published, we would republish it. But that's where you would see the, the rate adjustment um, is in that ordinance. That, is that correct, Sandy? So there's not actually a, a number assigned to the tax increase yet? It's just called? Yep, as proposed in the current document that exists right now that was circulated, it includes a 15 cent property tax increase for commercial properties and does not identify a residential 
tax increase right now. What is on the table and is being discussed is modifying those two numbers, residential going up to essentially 10 cents and commercial coming down to 10 cents. If that is decided and determined, I guess, at our next budget session, which is scheduled for next Monday, um, that would then be um, <coughs> publicly, um, uh, pr um, it will be publicly advertised. Um, one of the other things for consideration, I was talking to the mayor over here, as I know there's a lot of angst on what's happening in the public hearing. What is not off the table is a secondary conversation that can happen with the public based on um, a, a new landing spot. So again, a lot of stuff is going on right now. Um, there is still an opportunity that we could engage with the public prior to June 12th before second reading to discuss whatever is the new proposal. I was just trying to clarify because so what you're what in 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 this you're calling the proposed tax increase the the constant yield tax rate and we haven't gotten to that yet even though we've been commenting on it so far is that is that correct so i'm i'm talking in the wrong spot here then do i need to wait until you guys we, talk about we that hear you. We hear you. Yeah, we, you can speak. It's fine. Kind of all mis, mix mashed together. So okay, I, I just going. wanted to make sure that the city council wasn't voting I four to zero for let, a second reading of the let of me, approving me, the ta if tax tax increase already. That's no, for my. If I could, it's not Madam, a Madam Vice President, I, I, something I, was. So <laughs> let me let me just see if I can clarify because I know there's a the lot of new faces that I've I not thought. seen. Um, the reason we have public hearings is to get the feedback. And then the, the budget isn't final until it's final. Right. I was just making sure that, no, no. that we weren't voting it's a, on it's that a valid, right now. It's a valid question, but that's the reason we have public hearings. The first public hearing we, we had, or the, the first time we put the uh, budget out, we had the FSA in there. We heard, we did more homework, we heard what people said, and th th on the second one, it, it isn't there. We have the ability to do the same thing now, but we have to find out if we make changes, what does those changes are gonna be based on what we decide is the best way to go forward. Okay, I was just making sure that they weren't voting on the, um, that the council wasn't already voting on that tax increase as a four to zero I and that they were open to negotiation um, based on public comment. This is just the first Correct. Reading. Okay, That's right. thank this you. Correct. That's all I have to say for now. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brett Hopkins. I'm president of Salisbury Area Property Owners Association, 925 Eastern Shore Drive. I'm a business owner, part-time resident here in the city. Um, thank you, everyone, for getting up here and speaking. I think it's, you know, it's it's resonating. Um, it's certainly heartfelt. Um, I stood here two weeks ago, uh, and I'm not going to repeat that testimony, but. The average working person who gets a 5% pay increase, that pay increase is gonna be completely absorbed by these proposed increases. So the person that goes to work every day gets a reasonable increase will be no farther ahead with their labor and their time. Um, that's point one. Point two is there's, there's efficiency in taxation um, called the Laffer Curve, that you can only tax people so much before it rolls over and you actually get less income even though you're taxing more because it dissuades people from working hard, from investing, uh, for doing the extra things. Um, I think you're, you're dangerously close to rolling over top of that Laffer Curve and you're gonna try harder, but your revenue is gonna become a lot less. And we heard testimony uh, a little bit ago to that effect where the comment I think was made, well, who wants to buy a house in the city now when you're going to get double taxed? Well, that's the Laffer curve in practice, and that's what's happening. So I implore you to really think this through. Go back to what was said earlier that you just start doing the necessary things to get your fiscal house in order and demonstrate to the citizens of Salisbury and business owners that this is a good place to live. You will be double taxed. The mayor and the council are gonna fight on your behalf to the county to, to claw back some money from them, but it's gonna be 
efficiently spent those dollars to do what is necessary and it will benefit you in, in totality to live here, work here, invest here, go to school here. Uh, it will be the better place to be, not outside the city. And then you'll be back on this side of the Laffer curve that it's efficiency and taxation where it makes all the sense in the world. Your tax rates may be less, but your tax revenue will be higher. I, I know it's counterintuitive, but if you look it up, it's a well-proven economic theory. Um, and that's what I ask you guys to do, is to go there, not keep pushing on tax assessments, tax rates, water rates, all that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you speaking? Yes, sure. I'm not going to speak very long. I'm having a little difficulty with a sinus problem here, but <clears throat> I just want to remind you again, I told you two weeks ago, <clears throat> I'm, I'm in the rental business, and in the rental business, there's only one source of income, and that's what comes from the tenants. In Salisbury, by estimates that I have heard, maybe as much as 70% tenants. So you know who's going to be bearing the lion's share of this cost. Assessments are up this year big time, which generates more revenue. Um, and another issue is questioning the city's authority to impose a fee or a tax on county residents other than city residents. I don't know whether that has been um, uh, negated by the change that uh, is apparently being made um, to for the fee to change it into um, increased tax rate. Um, I frankly, I'm confused about who's on first here. I think everybody else is in the room. Um, we've got the general drift, but as far as what number is assigned to that piece of legislation, I'm not quite sure, and I don't think most people here are. Um, <clears throat> the, <clears throat> the, the city has spent a lot of money, either spent or given away a lot of money in the last few years. The, you heard uh, the total fees waived for um, the housing expansion program, whatever you want to call it, um, is <coughs> over $40 million. $40 million, that is a lot of money. And that's money that's got to be made up somewhere, and it's going to be made up by these people sitting right here in, in this room. There may be a housing shortage in Salisbury, but I can assure you it is not to the tune of 7,684 units. That is way over and above um, whatever amount of, of housing shortage there is. Um, <clears throat> We've spent a lot of money on a lot of different things. Um, a couple that come to mind, um, the city hall um, lease, the old fire department building, was sold in 2013 for $85,000. It's just recently been leased back by the city for 15 years uh, at a price of $1.8 million. $1.8 million, <clears throat> that's $10,000 a month. Just it's astounding to me. Uh, the Marina Landing Project. I, I mean, I know you want to get something started down there, but 2.4 acres of waterfront land, including the buildings, was sold to a developer for $1. Free use of the adjacent city parking lot, 50-year lease on the docks and the basin, and the city's responsible still for all the capital improvements on the docks and pilings. And that was that lease is one dollar a year. That's that's where the money's going, or the revenue uh, is not going to be coming. Um, <clears throat> they're all perhaps nice things, but if you can afford them, but 
you know, you just can't do that sort of thing and then turn up not having enough money to pay the electric bill. That's, I mean, that's the situation that everybody else in this room faces. And, and you know, when it comes down to the numbers, the city has to face the same, the same issues. Um, <clears throat> the uh, housing shortage, um, this gentleman just said Salisbury has a housing shortage and that's unacceptable. Well, that's a matter of opinion. You know, it's unacceptable if you're the one that's paying for it. But if all of these folks are paying for it, it might be another story. We're bringing lots of new people here, 7,600, almost 7,700 new units, and, <clears throat> and sacrificing as much as $40 million in revenue at the expense of everybody sitting in this room. They're paying the cost for all of the new people who presumably haven't had a stake in Salisbury, um, may, may not yet have a stake in Salisbury until these units are completed. So that's nice stuff to do, but you know, you gotta figure out who's gonna pay for it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that was sworn in? Okay, we will now close the public hearing. You have any questions or comments? Council? None? None. Okay. I'm going to call the motion off all in favor of ordinance 2804, signify by saying aye. 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 The vote is four to zero. The vice president votes aye. I would like to entertain a motion to second the constant yield rate. So moved. Second. The city of Salisbury notice of a proposed real property tax increase. The mayor and the city council of the city of Salisbury proposes to increase real property taxes for non-commercial real property, including apartments. One, for tax year beginning July 1, 2023, the estimated real property assessable base will increase by 1.7% from, and I'm gonna read this number numerically, one comma two zero zero comma seven seven five comma two six zero, which is one billion two hundred million seven hundred seventy five thousand two hundred sixty dollars to one comma two two one comma two one five comma four seven three, which is one billion two hundred twenty one million two hundred fifteen thousand four hundred and seventy three dollars for non-commercial real property, including apartments too. If the city of Salisbury maintains the, tax, the current tax rate of 0 0.9832 cents per $100 of assessment, real property tax revenues will increase by 1.7%, resulting in $200,968 of new real property tax revenues. Three, in order to fully offset the effect of increasing assessments, the real property tax rate should be reduced to 0.9667 cents, the constant yield tax rate. Four, the city is considering not reducing its real property tax rate enough to fully offset increasing assessments. The city proposes to adopt a real property tax rate of 0.9832 cents per $100 of assessment. This tax rate is 1.7% higher than the constant yield tax rate and will generate $200,968 in additional property tax revenues. The city of Salisbury is proposing a tax rate for, sorry, proposing a different tax rate for commercial real property, excluding apartments. The following chart provides the corresponding constant yield information for those properties, and that tax chart was included as part of the agenda. Okay. Um, is there anyone that we want to speak for this public hearing? You need to stand and be sworn in. Okay, we'll now open the public hearing. He's already. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> 
So <clears throat> this is the this constant yield rate that you're is this something that you're getting ready to vote on after the public hearing is closed? For the first reading. That's the first reading. So Correct. For, for the first, first reading. First readings, um, yes, it's okay. just the public hearing. So right now what you're about to vote on is is an, an, a, a yes or a no on a 10% property tax increase. Is that right? Um, no, is that, that what's proposed right now? Or am I wrong in saying that? Yeah, it's not in the current um, proposed real property tax increase. It's, uh, Jake, it's not, it's not included in this current document right now. That is what is being considered by council um, and will be discussed again um, Monday night at the budget discussions. But as read right now, there is no property tax increase in this current legislation. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> The public hearing is now closed. I would like to call a motion. All those in favor of the constant yield rate, please signify by saying aye. 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 Four to zero. Vice President votes aye. No. Okay. No. It's a just to yeah, clarify, this is just to move it forward in the process. We have not uh, formally voted on yeah, anything at this moment. This yeah. is just to move it forward. I saw your confusion across the yeah, room. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve ordinance number 2797 for the second reading. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Ordinance number 2797, an ordinance of the city of Salisbury approving a budget amendment of the FY 2023 general fund budget to appropriate funds to the Salisbury Fire Department's operating budget. This is before you for second reading, no changes or amendments since first reading. Are there any questions or comments? Council? No. Okay, I'd like to call the motion. All those in favor of ordinance 2797? Please signify by saying aye. 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 And the vice president votes aye. The vote is four to zero. I'd like to make a motion to approve ordinance number 2798 for the second reading. So moved. Second. Two. Ordinance number 2798. An ordinance for the city of Salisbury to one authorize the mayor to enter into a contract with the Department of Housing and Community Development for the purpose of accepting grant funds in the amount of five hundred thousand dollars to authorize the mayor to enter into a sub recipient agreement with Railroad Avenue Investments LLC and three to approve a budget amendment to the grant fund to appropriate the aforementioned funds to be used for eligible expenses associated with the Union Railway Station stabilization project. This is before you for second reading. There have been no changes or amendments since first reading. Are there any questions or comments? Council? None. None. I'd like to call the motion, call for a motion. All those in favor of ordinance 2798, please signify by saying aye. 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 The vote is four to zero. Vice President votes aye. I'd like to mo make a motion to approve ordinance number 2799 for second reading. So moved. Second. Ordinance number 2799, an ordinance of the city of Salisbury to authorize the mayor to enter into a contract with the Department of Housing and Community Development for the purpose of accepting grant funds in the amount of $25,000 and to approve a budget amendment to the grant fund to appropriate these <coughs> funds to be used for eligible expenses associated with an event fund for the Main Street District. This is before you for second reading. No changes or amendments since first reading. Are there any questions or comments, Council? Um, no. Yeah, I'd like to call a motion. All those in favor of ordinance 2799 for second reading. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Four to zero. Vice President votes aye. I'd like to make a motion and have a second to approve ordinance 2800 for second reading. 
So moved. So moved. Second. Michelle got that one. Ordinance number 2800, an ordinance of the city of Salisbury amending chapter 1.08 of the Salisbury City Code entitled Election Board and chapter 1.12 entitled City Campaign Advertising and Finance to adopt recommendations made by the City of Salisbury Election Board. This is before you for second reading. No changes or amendments since first reading. Are there any questions or comments by the council? None. None. I'd like to call the motion. All those in favor of ordinance 2800 sec for the second reading, please signify by saying aye. 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 The vote is four to zero. Vice President votes aye. I'd like to make a motion to approve ordinance number 2801 for second reading. So moved. Second. Second. Ordinance number 2801, an ordinance of the city of Salisbury to authorize the mayor to enter into a contract with the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development for the purpose of accepting funds from the Connected Communities Grant in the amount of $34,228 for the Ann Street Village Fiber Internet Project. This is before you for second reading. There have been no changes or amendments since first reading. Any questions or comments, Council? None. No. I'd like to call a motion. All those in favor of ordinance 2801 for second reading, please signify by saying aye. 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 Four to one. The vote is four to one. Vice President votes aye. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve ordinance number 2805 for second reading. So moved. Second. Ordinance number 2805, an ordinance of the city of Salisbury approving a budget amendment of the FY 2023 general fund budget to appropriate funds to the Salisbury Fire Department's operating budget. This is before you for second reading. No changes or amendments since first reading. Okay, are there any questions or comments, council? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. All those in favor of ordinance 2805 for second reading, reading please signify by saying aye. 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 The vote is four to zero. The vice president votes aye. I'd like to make a motion to move ordinance number 2802. Oh, this, I don't want you to say one. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Six. Wait a minute. Okay, six, I've, yeah. got, I've got it now. I'd like to make a, a motion to approve ordinance 2806 for first reading. Um, call a motion to approve it, and then I need a second. So moved. So moved. Second. Uh, I actually I move to amend ordinance number 2806 by striking. $3,574.80 on lines 15, 29, and 36, and inserting $4,518.40. No question. You have to approve the say. amendment first, yeah, and then you have to approve the actual. Yeah. So we need a second. second. We need a second. second. Did she? You need a second. We use the amendment. Second. Okay. Um, it's a call for a vote. I call the motion. All those in favor of resolution? Wait a minute. No, the amendment. no for the, the amendment. amended. Tw number 2806 as amended for the first uh, reading. No, we got to have to vote on the amendment, amendment first. first. And then separately the, the final. I call a motion for to approve ordinance number 2806 for first reading. Mm -hmm. um, so. What? Megan, um, motion Megan to amend, amended. and Angela seconded, so then we vote on Call that for the vote amendment, on the amendment first. Okay. Yeah. On just the amendment. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd like to call a motion. All those in favor of the amendment on 2806, please signify by saying aye. 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 Then call for the vote on 2806 as amended. Yeah. 
Okay, and let me see. And I. Okay, and now I'm calling for the vote. I'll call the motion. All those in favor of ordinance 2806 as amended for first reading signify by saying aye. 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 Vote is four to zero, and the vice um, president votes aye. I make a motion to approve ordinance number 2806. So moved. So moved. Oh, second. Oh, seven. Oh. Old seven. Yeah. <clears throat> ordinance number 2807, an ordinance of the city of Salisbury approving a budget amendment of the FY 2023 general fund budget and the FY 2023 water sewer fund budget to appropriate additional funds required for field operations. Whereas the city has declared multiple pieces of equipment as surplus and the equipment has been sold through online auction. Whereas the city equipment was operated by field operations and waterworks. And whereas the city, the city's field operations and waterworks departments would like to use the proceeds to assist in purchasing and repairing equipment. Whereas the funds will be instrumental in continued <laughs> operations for the field operations and waterworks. Whereas the budget amendment as provided herein must be made upon the recommendation of the mayor and the approval of four fifths of the council of the city of Salisbury. Section one, the city of Salisbury's fiscal year 2023 general fund budget is hereby amended as follows. Increase revenue account 01000-469200 with description sale of fixed assets and the amount of $24,492.97. Increase expense account number 31150-4, I'm sorry, dash 546012, description equipment and maintenance and the amount of $24,492.97. Section two, the city of Salisbury's fiscal year 2023 water sewer budget is hereby amended as follows. Increase revenue account 60100-469200, description sale of fixed assets in the amount of $4,664.58, and increase expense account number 86085-534308, description vehicle repair amount $4,664.58. Okay, are there any questions or comments, Council? None yet. Angela? None. I'd like to call a motion. All those in favor of 2807 for the first reading, please signify by saying aye. 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 And the Vice President votes aye. So now we're down to the part of the public comments. Administration? Um, did, did you want to call the public? Oh, yeah, public hearing? Um, the public uh, comments, comments on the sheets that you have. There's the same ones that spoke for the. Um, no. Joe okay. Schiller. Okay. This gentleman. Okay. Had Colin Did you have anything Zimmerman, else you wanted to say? Colin Zimmerman, Brent Hopkins, and Lou Angela. I was looking at the, um, the ordinance 2798. I was just wondering, do we have anything in, like, on the books that prevents gentrification from occurring? Because I kind of, I'm kind of concerned, like, I understand the Union Railway Station, it's, it's, it's dilapidated, it definitely needs um, it to be repaired, but I, I'm concerned that Fitzwater, for example, and the Church Street, Barkley, that area too, could potentially the people who can afford to live there right now with potential development might not be able to afford to live there in the future. And that's something I was wondering if we have anything on the books right now that prevents gentrification in this area. Well, I could argue that the Here is Home initiative addresses that affordable housing issue, but it's definitely something that I believe the city council and the city administration is extremely mindful of as we start yeah. further well, development in some of these other neighborhoods. We spoke on it before mm -hmm. oh, okay. um, about the area because that is my district. And um, 
when all those lovely buildings come up, I know that they're not going to see the want to see the eyesore across the street from it. So we had a project that we were trying to work on before to try to beautify that area up. Um, it didn't go through, but that's one of my accomplishments for this year to make sure that, you know, that doesn't happen or we're going to do everything we can to prevent it from happening. Uh, yeah, I was just asking, yeah. Because, like, when my family, when they first came here, they lived on 679 Fitzwater, so that's, like, mm -hmm. that's like personal to me, but I know for a fact that once the marina building is there, that building is there. Not, no. So that's what I was, like, wondering. Okay, thank you. That's all thank I you. Yeah, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Okay, administration and council comments. Administration? I usually don't say anything, but I just uh, want to make a couple comments, if that's okay, based off of how t this evening went. Um, I think, I believe that we have scheduled ourselves for a budget session next Monday um, to further some of these conversations. Um, understanding, I also thought it was a good idea, a proposal to move the second reading of the budget to June 12th to give us more time for some decision points. Um, if that is decided, there would be then an additional council meeting on May 24th. So um, as a recommendation, if we decide to do budget sessions on next Monday on the 17th to discuss things and would like any additional further feedback from the community prior to the June 12th adoption, um, you do have that ability, I think, on the 24th for a second public hearing of sorts. So I know there's a lot of confusion, a lot of things up in the air. If you want that to have an opportunity with clarification, as the person said, um, I don't even know what we're talking about or voting on. I'd like to have a finalized plan so then I can provide feedback. That creates an opportunity. We would just need to think about that and coordinate that with Kim. So just wanted that to be on the record. Thanks, Andy. Okay, Jenny. Yeah, I, I think I've said enough for tonight, but I, I do want to um, put the appeal out for uh, blood donors, uh, and I'm sure Angela will mention that as well. Um, I hope that uh, <clears throat> the people that were here tonight take seriously my comments about going to the, uh, the county and, and, and trying to get some resolution. Uh, and I'm sorry that everybody left because I would like to respond that we've met on multiple occasions with the county and tried to get this resolved. And we've gotten the same answer every time we've done it. So um, I'm not giving up hope. Uh, and I think that maybe next time in, in next year's budget, um, we maybe have a um, sort of a prepper for uh, this is how this works so that people don't think that every time we have a, the first reading that it's the final reading mm -hmm. and what the process really looks like. So uh, other than that, um, thank you for your work tonight in April. Thank good you. job for your first uh, major yes, meeting. Yes, good job. Fire. Okay, Angela. <clears throat> uh, I just, I mean, I think we're definitely compelled um, to schedule additional um, meetings and budget hearings. I think that's compelling. Um, I think it's very important to make sure we listen to everybody. They, there's some very good, valid points. Um, I think we just, we're going to have to dig deeper. I work have to figure out how to, how to do that, make that work. Uh, I do know that we've been to the county and it's very disheartening. Um, I, I'm also to the point, too, uh, that as a city resident that, that I'm not interested, if they're not interested in paying for their 5,000 calls, I'm not interested in paying for their five, those 5,000 calls. Um, so some, something has to give somewhere. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and like you said, I wanna reiterate, everyone who came with the energy with us, make sure that they go to the county about that because I know we certainly have. Um, and and if, again, if you are healthy enough and fortunate enough to have your health, please donate blood. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I, everyone's gone, but I, I still want to kind of thank them all for coming out. Like you mentioned, uh, this is public comment 
process is probably the, the trickiest part for people to understand. And I know when I first dipped my toes into local politics, it was difficult. So one, congratulations. Thank you, Luke, for coming out. Because <laughs> it's nice to see some younger faces out in this audience, but also just for everyone who came out today. Thank you for pro providing the feedback. As Andy mentioned, this is all valuable feedback. We take every comment that you've made here, and we reflect on it as a team here. And, and then I just want to thank Andy and his team again, because the budget is something we do annually, but it is not an easy task to make sure that we are providing all the services to our residents, making sure everything's functioning properly. So we have a big road ahead of us, Andy, but I just wanted to take the time that as much as we make critique the work that you are doing, it is absolutely valuable and 100% and respect and kudos to the work that you and your team have been doing to make sure we can have successful meetings each Monday. Okay. I'd like to no. thank Michelle. Michelle? Oh, yeah, Michelle. <laughs> you are there, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. It, it, I'm my sorry. Dog, I think my dog wanted to make I'm public sorry. comments. So, um, listen, I just want to thank everybody for coming out. We've always appreciated hearing from folks. Um, I think there's been a little bit of misinformation, a little bit of confusion. I do want to point out that when we do have landlords coming up and making comments saying that we're we're waiving these fees, these are those are construction projects that would not have happened were it not for Here is Home and the Horizon program. Let's be clear. The number one thing that I heard on the campaign trail when I ran for this seat was housing is too expensive. And now these landlords are complaining that we have a that we have uh, incentivized housing being built because the, this housing would not be built without those programs and those incentives. We are incentivizing that housing, and that means that they're going to have to be much more competitive in their in their rents, okay, because rent is outrageous. So I want people to keep that in mind when they're hearing these, these uh, property owners uh, the, that are landlords or people who work in, pro, uh, in, in real estate and that sort of thing. And I say this, Colin is a friend. I play D&D &D with Colin. So I, 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 I know, you know, that... It doesn't mean that they're bad people, but they're looking out for their own interests. And right now, that may not be in the best interest of the citizens of the city. Um, I also want to point out that, you know, that lack of housing, the, uh, again, that those, those units are for people who live here. You know, we've had to erect the the tiny home village for people who are unhoused currently we have a waiting list for that already and they just opened so you know i want people to understand that yeah there is a housing crisis and we needed to it, we needed to invest in in housing and that wasn't it it was not some tax break to to developers where they got cash it just incentivized them to be able to build and incentivize their investors to invest. So let me just put that out there. Um, and secondly, I appreciate you guys being patient with me being on Zoom the past couple of weeks. I have hurt my back. It is very difficult for me to drive. <laughs> um, so I just appreciate your patience. Hopefully I will be back in, in, in the room next week. I'm hoping, fingers crossed. So, um, but I, I do want to reiterate, I appreciate that, it, you know, I understand 25% of our, our population is under the poverty level and we, we are very mindful of that in every decision we make. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thanks. Thank you, Michelle. Um, for myself, I would just like to say thank you, Mira Boda, for not being here today. <laughs> <laughs> you really broke me in, but I really appreciate it because you need that. You know, I mean, and I'm, I'm not happy that he's not here, but that's... If, if I'm going to be the vice president, give me the opportunity to do what I need to do. So I'm very appreciative. Miss you, though, Boda. Really miss you, but um, I'm, I'm too like Michelle. Um, and, and I do want to say this, and I, I don't want anybody to be offended by it. But when I, mean, I hear the people saying they're on fixed income to Social Security, but what do we do when the federal government takes that $164 and some more out of your pay for medical? We don't say a thing. And we, we don't say anything. We don't fight for it. And just like the mayor said, things do go up. No, who wants to raise taxes? No, we don't want to raise taxes. No, we don't want to have different fees. But how are we going to run Salisbury if we don't do something? Second of all, and I will say it, and I will continue to say it, the county needs to take the responsibility of helping they 
we service 5,000 calls for them. Can they imagine how much, how costly that is for the city? They need to step up to the plate. There's no argument, no fuss and fight. We're not kids. We're adults. And we know what needs to be done. I just ask and I pray that we do the right thing by the citizens that we govern, the citizens that we make these ordinances and legislations for. I pray we do the right thing. That's all I ask. And you all have a good night. Meetings adjourned. Uh, meet adjourned. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>